President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Yahya Bello is here. So we are starting the event any moment from now, please. Thank you. Hello, check in the mic. Hello, one, two, sound check, check in the microphone. We are going to the next stage. May we request the indulgence to please continue. A very young sir, over to you. The mic. Your Excellencies. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we welcome here today His Excellency, the Governor of Kogi State. And this If you're part of a committee or whatever, however, we ask for indulgence. So please, please, for the success of this event, give us the necessary support, please. And we believe you're going to apply to this plane. If you're ready, over to you, Shams, please. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You know me, right? That's you, my Jack. I'm Mr. Shams. <laughs> hey, I want to tell you something about this upcoming election. You know what I'm saying? 2023 is for you. Tell me. Tell, tell everybody, I found a leader. 2023, you got ginger. Not as a sister. Make sure I be the winner. Winner, winner, winner. I'm ready. I think we're ready now. We're ready now. Put your hands in the air. If you want to see this day, give a chance for you. For the truth, that's why everybody change. No time for paparazzi. But for the homology. Bring many more chances to see your name this. You know what I'm saying? Let's all stand on our things. I'm for the Ebony Haya Bello. Let's go. How are you gonna be? I'm gonna be going to 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank his Excellency is here now. Shall we all rise wherever we may be and stand for the national anthem? The national anthem, please.
very much. Let me invite here uh, Alhaji Abdul Malik Taina and Dr. Mrs. Fola Shadi Arikai Ayuade to please give us the opening prayers. The opening prayers for the Islamic we have Alhaji Abdul Malik Taina and then the Christian Dr. Mrs. For Lashade, Arike, Ayuade. In reference to the Most High God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one that has given us Alaji Yaya Belo, shall we please pray? Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you to you. We magnify your name, O Lord, for who you are. We exalt you, Lord, and we say there is no one like you. Thank you, Lord God, for the day Alaji Ayabelo came into this world. Thank you for what you have done through him. Thank you, Lord God, for what you will still do through him. We magnify your name, O oh Lord, and we say to you alone, be the glory. Blessed Redeemer, we commit him unto you. We commit Nigeria unto you. We commit this program of his declaration to run for president unto you. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you alone take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Have your way, O oh Lord, and your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please shall we all rise now. In the last few weeks, it has been challenging in Nigeria. All over Nigeria, there have been sadness and mourning. In respect for those who lost their lives, shall we all rise now for a minute's silence. Wherever you may be, for those across the country, north, west, east, and south, who have lost their lives as we move as a nation, shall we rise now for a minute's silence. May 
Let the souls of the departed rest in perfect peace. Thank you very much, be seated. Your Excellency, the Governor of Kogi State, today, the essential GYB will transit to essential PYB. This is supposed to be a political declaration, but what I'm seeing here is a carnival. So Your Excellency and the First Ladies of Kogi State, I welcome you. Let me welcome the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Ahmed Idris Wase. I'd like to welcome the His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Kogi State, His Excellency Edward David Onoja. I welcome all the members of the National Assembly that are here. I welcome the National Coordinator and National Chairman, National Campaign Council of the Yaya Hope 2023. But it's so fitting that 20 years ago, this same man was in charge of the campaign of MK Abiola, then tapped Hope 93. 20 years after, when Hope is the mantra, he is the chairman of the Yaya Campaign Council. Let's have put our hands together for, his, for the distinguished senator, Jonathan Silas Swingina. I welcome you, sir. Also here is one of the finest cerebral Nigerians, Oluwa Femi Adewumi Abdul Latif Fanikaode. He is the deputy national coordinator, deputy chairman, national campaign council. I'd like to welcome Mrs. Hafsat Abiola, the Director General. I welcome all the directors of the campaign. I welcome the over 27,000 from across Nigeria that are here as we celebrate a new chapter in the life of Nigeria. The journey has begun. The movement is on. The leader is strong. He's youthful respect to elders, and also pandering to the youth. I welcome all of you. Today is very, very important in the life of our nation. And I'm not here alone. MC Big Man is here. But particularly, let me welcome a, a lady that I worked with in the last 30 years, holding the microphone during presidential events. She is a publicist, an author, Dr. Ronke Bello is also here with us. Ronke, is your microphone working over there? Thank you. All right, please go ahead. Thank you very much, a very young broadcaster for excellence. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I'll take this there. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. As a very said, it's a full house. We have other people that will be joining us soon, too. But it's a great day for Nigeria. It's a great day for Yaya Bello because we asked if he wanted to come and he said yes, he will come. So we greet you and we welcome you. Mutane Arewa Munge Sheku. Mata Munge Sheku. Maza Munge Sheku. Munge Sheku Owa Wunyazo Dege Arewa. Kusan Tuntu Nikuna Tambeshi Yaya Bello. Weze Pitaza Epita Weze Amsa Wunirana. Yo ni yo, yo ya pita, zai mbaku magana, zaku ji, iya gamba magana, abonyache muyi, zai muyi. Enye nyamilati, ile ududua, e kabo, onilo ninjao, shia mbakwe roro yila ansokwe, okwe ta tire tire, kabo, she da dalode. E tinkwe ya ya beno, eniko ba insoro, eniko jade, eniko wason, katofa shefu na ijirea, asiko yene tide, onilo ninjao, so, aki yi, aki obini, aki okuri, aki ojo, aki bobo yi kwe kabo. Maza mu munge sheku, maza za munge sheku, maza munge sheku. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Today is the day. Today is the day of hope. Today is the day of bridging the gap. Hope for the women, hope for the men, hope for the youth, hope for the people living with disability. We welcome you. I invite my brother Biko. Biko. 
come and help me here. Welcome our people from the east. Thank you. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I invite most respectfully the chairman of this occasion. He is a great Nigerian, Salvador Mashud, an elder statesman, chairman of this occasion, to please come and give us his opening remarks. As we expect him, can we have some music, please? Let's have some music as we welcome this elder statesman to address this great gathering. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You know me, right? Rescue Night. Jack. I'm Mr. Sham. And Miss, <laughs> I want to tell you something about this upcoming election. You know what I'm saying? 2023 is for the youth. Tell, tell, tell everybody. I found the leader. 2023, you got ninja. Brothers and sisters. Make sure I be the winner. 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 2023. In that day, in that Put your hands in the air if you wanna see this day. Give a chance for you, for to lose why be for the change. No time for paparazzi, but for the homology. Yeah, yeah, man, bring many more chance cause we got them busy. You know what I'm saying? Let's all stand on our feet. I'm for the every year, yeah, fellow. Let's go. How are you gonna be? Agriculture, electricity, I want to throw you. I found the leader, 2023, no ginger. Brothers and sisters, make sure I've been at a week. We know, we know, we know, we know. How are you gonna be? Agriculture, electricity, I want to throw you. Health facility, infrastructure, good security. This is a live channels television event reaching you from the Eagle Square in Abuja. It's the formal declaration of the executive governor of Kogi State, Alahaji Yahaya Adoza Belu, for the presidency come 2023. Of course, uh, some dignitaries are here to join the governor in his declaration. Uh, please stay with us right here on Channels Television. For the end of corruption, the hope for economic liberation, and the hope for better Nigeria. Yaya Bello, as the governor, this declaration has turned to a national event at the Eagle Square today. Today, the youth of this nation has come to prove that they are truly leaders of tomorrow. And their tomorrow is now. 60% of our population are between the ages of 18 and 40 years. The decision to be democratically be in control should be made today. I didn't just agree to be the chairman of this occasion. I agree because of the pedigree of Governor Yahya Bello. We don't need to talk about education but to talk about character and the person. I have been following his activities 
of this gentleman in the last eight years. Let me remind you of his decision not to accept the reality of pandemic. He put his foot down and was proven right because nobody died of pandemic in his state. His state was not locked down. And that gave me the confidence in this gentleman that nobody can intimidate him with any policy from any authority of the world. Security network of Kogi is second to none because it combined the conventional security with the local security to man his state and it proved to be successful. In July last year, a letter of commendation from the World Bank through its regional direction subhand country. It has never happened in the history of Nigeria for a governor to refund surplus money back for others to use. $4.63 million surplus fund under the Nigeria Erosion and Watershed Management was refunded. The World Bank appreciated him, ended its level of integrity and incorruptibility he appointed at least 45 people, 45 political appointees of Kogise from other zones of Nigeria. That tells you how detribalized he is. Governor Yayabelo assumed the office as a governor, to, as the youngest governor in this country. The youth of this country. You don't need to sit down and be saying we are the leaders of tomorrow. You have to come up and support members of the youth so that we can be proud that we have effective, powerful, sensible, and smart youth in this country. I can assure you, you all the youth of this country, the women of this country, you are capable of getting the best out of this nation. This is the best country in the world. If you come out to give all your support to Governor Yaya Bailey, I can assure you, you will be happy. You will have the best of Nigeria in a very short future. Thank you very much. We welcome all of you to this special gathering. Let me remind you and call your attention to one thing. Even our party convention is not as big as this. The PDP convention is not as big as this. You can look at the faces of the people around. They are fantastic youth of this country. That tells you the supporters of Yayabelo are Nigerians, not just PAPC or PDP or KKK or PPP. They are all in support of him. Therefore, let us go back home, talk to other youth to prepare the best for their children, for their tomorrow, and support Yayabelo in all the world. I'm not talking of states now. In all the world, local government zone, then come to state before we now talk of the national. Thank you for coming for this special occasion. We appreciate you. All of you will be happy and be fantastic people in the next future. Thank you. Thank you very much, the chairman of this occasion. He has set the space. He said APC's last convention was not as huge as this that even PDP's convention was not as huge as this. So it means we've gathered for one man, one man called Yaya Bello, the face of hope, the ray of hope, the beacon of hope, the one who is into paradigm shift for Nigeria. We welcome you. And your door, Akinyi, Mata Samungesheku, Sonuku. 
At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I invite most respectfully the national coordinator and chairman Yaya Bello Presidential Campaign Organization, a statesman, a political strategist, a well-renowned Nigerian, please let's welcome Senator Jonathan Zuingina. Music as it comes on. For president, president, Yaya Bello for president, president, 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 for 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 President, 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 President,
with my daughter, Dr. Hafsat Abiola, standing to my left. Please clap for her. Let's hope for a Nigeria, a country that can be proud of. And this been the main focus administration of President Buhari. Above all, Nigerians across generations, they hope for the next leader who can further inspire hope and continue to the good works of the president. I'm happy to inform this August occasion and all Nigerians that the leadership surge for the continuation of President Buhari's positive legacies has been found in Governor Yahaya Adoza Bell. In the current executive governor of Kogi State, many compatriots and I have found a leadership that Nigeria desires. Yahya Bello is young, but he offers more than just his youthfulness. From my findings and interactions, we find in him and those who have known him for a considerable length of time, Yahya Bello is a highly detrabalized leader with no trace of religious discrimination at all. It is on record that he runs his government state with appointees from the zones of this country. At least 45 of his political appointees are indigenous from other states and geopolitical zones of the country. He has managed to do that without provoking political backlash from his countrymen and women. This is due to his understanding nature and his sheer political dexterity. Nigeria needs such leadership at the moment. As a Muslim governor, he made it a priority project to build a Christian church in the government house, even before completing the mosque in that environment. That speaks volume of the religious tolerance of the government. Nigeria needs such a leadership at this moment. In July last year, a letter of commendation by the World Bank through its regional director was sent to the governor of Kogi State for doing what nobody expected a Nigerian governor or any Nigerian politician to do. The World Bank held him officially for refunding $4.63 million surplus funds under the erosion water control. Even acknowledged the act, that the action made it possible to extend similar projects to other states in the country. Nigeria needs such leadership at this moment. Before assuming office as Nigeria's youngest governor, on January 27, Kogi State had been held in extremely violent criminal gangs. Which had taken hold of the state. Within months of becoming governor, His Excellency made sure that the criminal gangs were run out of town. There are massive armories, dead bonds confiscated and destroyed. And the government ensured that all of crime in eliminated. In most of those operations, even though 
civilian without military training. The governor personally took command of executing those weeks and months of sleepless nights. He totally uprooted criminality from Kogi State that nobody was possible. Kogi State has become, would have become a kidnapping and insurgency center. But Governor Yaya Bello has fixed There are other achievements in the area of infrastructure, such as education, health, national peace building interventions, and many more. Politicians will tell you what they intend to do, but statements showcase what they have achieved. History has shown that as nations mutate, so are the challenges they are confronted with, and so are the needs for the genre of leadership in different realities. The reality of today's Nigeria is that there are gaping gaps to bridge as an essential component of nation building. That is the purpose for Nigeria at the moment that requires leadership to fulfill and hope as fuel of national rebirth and creative development that makes nations big players. In this regard, we have identified Yahya Bello as the purpose president for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In the transformation of nations and transition from arrest of the important. It is therefore it is therefore my pride and pleasure to say that Governor Abello has capacity to introduce into Nigeria the miracle of Singapore, the miracle of United Arab Emirates or Dubai, so that we can become a country that Nigeria and the world can be proud of. We pray that all of us will support Governor Yahya Bello. He will be all the gaps, restore hope, and get the country moving on the right course. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you very much, and God bless you. He did it 20 years ago with the Abiola campaign, and there was victory. He's doing it again. Oh, 2023, the single senator Jonathan Silas Zwingina and the directors of the campaign stepping down. I'd like to appreciate Chief Fanny and the other members of the team. Let me welcome here all our royal fathers from across the country. Let me welcome here all the stakeholders in Nigeria's political space from across Nigeria. Let me assure you here that the heads they are seeing and is not Photoshop. We have over 27,000 people from across Nigeria. GYB, YBN groups from all over Nigeria. You are welcome. You are welcome. And so without much ado, your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome a man that actually loves what his board has been doing. He moved from being the chief of staff to being the deputy governor, and today his loyalty is not in question. I'd like to welcome here to give Nigerians and indeed the world a statement of achievements of His Excellency, the governor. Please welcome here his Excellency Edward David Onoja, Deputy Governor, Kogi yeah. State. Body no. 
Glory be to God Almighty for this day, for this nation, and for generation next Nigerians. Ramadan Karim to all our Muslim faithfuls. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kogi State, Alhaji Yahya Adoza Belo, and your lovely wives here present. The Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly and all members of the National Assembly here present. The chairman of today's occasion, the DG and members of the Campaign Council of Hope 2023 Alaji Ayah Dozabelo Campaign Group. My colleagues from Kogi State, great Nigerian youths, Great Nigerian youths, great of the greatest of the greatest of the greatest Nigerian youths. Today is our day. By 2023, I would have known His Excellency Alhaji Ayabelo for 20 years. The Agasabon Lion Club, nursed by the enterprising lioness, may her soul rest in perfect peace, who today has become the white lion of Nigeria. And it will be a difficult assignment to speak of a personality that I've known for 20 years in 10 minutes. But by the grace of God, I will do justice to that. I am going to highlight 10 points, beginning from the most crucial issue in Nigeria today. May the soul of our beloved ones who passed in the last train bombing rest in perfect peace with the Lord. Let me begin with security. I want to commend and appreciate my boss's colleague, Governor of Kaduna State, Malame Rufai, for telling us that they know the locations of these bandits. They even listen to their conversations. I want to appreciate him very dearly for that. And also commend and believe that very shortly, actions will be taken and no more lives will be lost. But on security, Governor Yayabelo would have done differently. When we arrived in Kogi State, His Excellency from Intelligence knew the security of the locations of terrorist cells, names of kidnapped lords, and thugs and assassins in Kogi State. He probably was also listening to their conversation, but he did not speak about it. He went head on and decimated them, and today, Kogi is one of the safest states in Nigeria. So on security, Governor Yayabelo does more of action than talking. Number two, there are two major monsters that have stagnated the speed and development of this country. We all know those two monsters. The monsters of tribalism 
and the monster of religious affiliation. Governor Yaya Dozabelu, in the last seven years, has shown clearly, without any iota of doubt, that he is a leader who is 100% detribalized. And I will give you a practical example. On assumption of Elfish on August 27, 2016, permit me to say, my beloved brothers from the Ibira Kingdom, hovered round around my brother, my governor. And it was their right that his chief of staff should come from amongst his brethren because there was a precedence laid down in Kogi State. His Excellency, the number one detribalized leader in Nigeria, thought differently and acted differently. He made me an Igala man, a Christian, his chief of staff in the first tenure. And contrary to the fears of the Ibira people, after four years, I got a letter from three leaders in the Ibira kingdom confessing, saying that the choice of His Excellency was best at that point in time. I got a letter from our father, the Oinoi of the Ibira land, I got a letter from our leader, Abdul Farouk Abdul Aziz, and I got a letter from our late father, Justice Moses Bello, testifying that His Excellency's decision was the best, and it was the best at that point in time. Number three, and this message goes to the Church of Christ in Nigeria. Kogi had remained without a place of worship for Christians, for 28 years, according to the president of Christian Association of Nigeria, he said the governor had the audacity of courage to go ahead and build for Christians a place of worship in government house Kogi State. I want to encourage our southern governors and colleagues of my dear brother, His Excellency Alaji Aya Adozabelo especially in the south-south zones and the south-east zone, to replicate mosques for our Muslim brothers in their respective government houses. Just the same way our governors of the north should do like their brother Kogi State has done. Because these two monsters are two critical factors that have kept us from becoming the great nation that we ought to have been. Governor Yaya Bello has demystified the monsters of tribalism and the monsters of religious bigotry in Kogi State. Number four, courage is what makes any leader. When the COVID-19 scourge came across the globe, his Excellency did not just follow science, but he said it was ideal for us to follow, use common sense and science mixed together. We thank God all over the globe, they are relaxing all the safety measures on COVID-19. We thank God Omicron is receding. We thank God that the Russia-Ukraine war has also almost made us to forget that there was once COVID-19 in the world. But in Kogi State, even though we took all the precautionary measures, we did not stop the lives and livelihood of our people. And I can tell you, in Nigeria, we had the least casualty of COVID-19 across the length and breadth of this country. Courage is what defines a leader. Governor Yaya Bello has shown courage not to follow the bandwagon, but to stand even when other people say no. And the results after two years is showing that his method, his decision, his style of managing the COVID-19 pandemic was about the best anywhere in the world. Number five.
reforms of the Kogi State Civil Service, pension, and other policy formulation in the last six years. Today, according to the chairman of Nigerian Labor Congress, Kogi State Chapter, the reform in Kogi State Civil Service has ensured a total paradigm shift, attitudinal change among the workforce that forms the engine room of any government. When you come to Kogi State today, every worker is about his duty, punctual and dedicated. And of course, at the state level, just this week, all civil servants, all pensioners got their alerts 100 percent. If there were no reforms in 2016 to 2018, we probably would have been grappling with trying to pay salaries of workers today. Courage is one who will take the decision to make things right even when it is not politically correct to do so. Number six. Political unity and victory of the All Progressive Congress in Kogi State. It is one thing to govern well. It is another thing to ensure that your party, your platform, continues to secure victory. In Kogi State, after three and a half years of Governor Yaya Belo's leadership, I can tell you for free, and it is known everywhere, that there is no trace, no sight of anything called opposition in Kogi State. In the last elections, Kogi State delivered 95% victory for all elective positions that were up for grabs. Unprecedented, unprecedented in the history of Kogi State. All the three senators, six over nine House of Reps, and 25 assembly members 21 chairman, 239 ward councillors, under four years of leadership. That is the sterling quality of leadership. And I believe that you can transport that to the entire Nigerian nation when you become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Number seven. Are our women here? Are the women here? Can I hear your voices? In the month of March, Nigerian women were practically living, sleeping, and eating at the gates of the National Assembly. Why were they doing that? so that the legislators can listen to their voices and help them pass laws that will give them a voice in the Nigerian nation. I want to assure you that Kogi women didn't have to sleep in government house Kogi states. Kogi women didn't have to go to the state assembly. Kogi women didn't have to sleep nights in the assembly because Governor Yaya Belu, the gender-sensitive governor, even before the women asked, gave them a voice in governance. I make bold to say that the method and formula that Governor Yaya Belu had used in Kogi State is already being adopted by his colleague governors across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Women. Can I hear you say three bosa for Yaya Belo? Let me end this year. Let me talk about the youths. I am a
strong advocate of zoning. A very strong advocate of zoning. But Albert Einstein says, you cannot continue to do the same thing the same way and expect a different result. I advocate zoning very strongly, but I'm not advocating for regional zoning. Northern zoning, Southern zoning, Christian South, Muslim North. No. I am advocating for a zoning formula that will give us the results that we desire in Nigeria. What is that zoning formula? Youth for youth, are you here? We have the pre-Civil War Nigerians and we have the post-Civil War generation Nigerians. 50 below. 51 and above. I want to beg our leaders. I want to beg our stakeholders. It is time to zone the number one seat to the post civil war generation Nigerians. Because we have them in the north, we have them in the south, we have them as Christians, we have them as Muslims. They, they are scattered all over Nigeria. So I am a strong advocate of zoning, but I want us to zone it to the age demography that is called post-Civil War Nigerians. And they cut across the entire length and breadth of Nigeria. Finally, 90% of the PVC holders in Nigeria today are below the age of 50. 90 percent of PVC holders, the power to choose, the power to vote, the power to make, 90 percent are in our hands. I am 48. Governor Yaya Bello is 47. We are below 50 years. And if 90% of us have the weapon to make the choice, it is time for that zoning to come to us, those below 50 years. Build the youth. Build the youth. Are we ready? Are we ready? I cannot hear you. Are we ready? Today, Governor Yaya Bello is lighting that fire inside of you. Take that fire and let's get the job done. Thank you and God bless you. His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Kogi State, His Excellency Edward David Onoja, thank you very much. His Excellency Governor Yaya Belu symbolizes exciting possibilities of what lies ahead of us as a nation as we commit ourselves to building bridges of love and harmony across the artificial devices that have been erected over the years in this country. He is indeed a breath of fresh air. Maybe that's why some of these very eminent Nigerians are part of the presidential organization. Chairman, distinguished Senator Jonathan Sila Zungina, Deputy Chairman, Chief Femi Fanikayode, Director General, Mrs. Hafsat, Abiola Costello, Director of Finance and Budget, Idris Ashwajwa Shiru, Director of Research and Strategy, Barrister Moses Okeze, Director of Contact, Mobilization and Support Groups, Dr. A. A. Maya Gogo, Director of Organization and Logistics, Seidu Boboy, 
greater media and publicity, Colonel Pogla, the fat, Director of Intelligence and Security, Chief Cletus Abdul Malik Suleiman, Spokesperson to the campaign, Chief Cletus Obun, Director of Youth Mobilization, Honorable Abubakar Sadiq Saadu, Director of Women Mobilization, Sarah Gift Onyinye, Director of People Living with Special Needs, Mohammed Abba Issa, Director Protocol, Dr. Ronke Belo, the very delectable Ronke Belo here, and Direct Secretary to the campaign, Halima Idris. That's the wonderful team that will deliver and transit from the essential GYB to the essential PYB. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's therefore my honor and pleasure to welcome here the Director General of the campaign. In 1993, her father ran on the hope mantra and he won the election. 20 years after, she's in the train. She's part of the team that will deliver hope to Nigerians. Please welcome the DG of the presidential campaign team, Mrs. Hafsat Abdiola Costello. of you that are here, 
but are more youthful than some of our elders as well. And I say to you that today we signal to all the vested interests in Nigeria that the takeover by Nigeria's women, the takeover by Nigerians' young people, the takeover by Nigeria's people has begun. Nothing is going to stop our march to Asu Rock in 2023. Amen. So congratulations. But what I will say to you is let us be mindful that we go with God. Because they tell us that one with God is a majority. What about when the majority are with God? Then our victory is certain. So, Governor Yvelo, prepare yourself. We will go east, we will go west, we will go north, we will go northeast, we will go northwest, northwest, we will go north central, we will go to the south south. All Nigerian people must see the leader that is coming. All Nigerian people must become involved in our destiny. And we must finally make this Nigeria the great nation that is meant to be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause. She's spoken truly like the daughter of a great man. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, if I will recap, she's just told us that this is the first time that the women will be selected as Director General of any campaign, political campaign in Nigeria. So that goes as a first for Yaya Belu. Let's have a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ibondi Omam Nejebon. Ana meke nunu nina azokwa. Wena asi. No. Maka mema aibela nubo chita. Oburu nunu lanya. Unu ga hune ebe ni nejuru eju. Nka negosi. E huna anya. Namasi eba inwene ebe wa madi ano. Bo. Governor Yahaya Belo. Nke egosi go na ogawagori. Ogawago na ogawago. Bikondi Bonine. Ah, eh, ni 
declaration for presidency of Governor Alahaji, the Hayabilo of Kogi State. A number of performances already happening in the interval and shortly we'll be having more goodwill messages from Nigerians who have come to support the governor's ambition. Uh, the governor's campaign team is uh, made up of quite notable people. Uh, as you heard just recently, the national coordinator and chairman of the National Campaign Council is Senator Jonathan Silas Zuengina. And deputizing him as the deputy national coordinator is Chief Femi Fani Kayodi, a uh, former minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Also, the director general of the campaign is Mrs. Hafsat Abiola Costello, who is a daughter of the former presidential candidates of the SDP, Chief MKO Abiola. Please stay with us. Persona to be on the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Persona, may before Persona, may we have those that are standing to please allow room for us. But before Persona, I've been asked to call upon humble speech. The Speaker of the Chicago Assembly doing a great job. Humbles me if you're ready. May I? Pasuma should be getting ready. Pasuma should be getting ready. While humbles me on the stage. We are very many here. May we have our indulgence for please. Don't stop. We are very many. Very many. Security personnel should please help us in rescue this situation. Almost ready if you're ready, it's your time. All right, let's allow him room. 
Let's go back, please. Thank you.
age. Thank you, thank you. We will come back to you later. We'll come back to you later. Please, let's be aware that we have, we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. No problem, thank no you, problem. Thank you. We are waiting. Thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually sleeping here tonight. After this event, we have lots and lots of musical performances. Emma Binu, Asima Jo, Botajaka Sorona, Mutane Arewa, Mungode, Mungode Akurinku, Nyasazamu Chigaba, Anji Mazamu Daumu Yirawa, Mungode. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'm bringing on my sister, a multilinguist, who is going to take the next set of events here. Let's welcome Atika Ajana, my sister. Welcome. Thank you so much. The very beautiful and delectable Dr. Runke Bello, with a very young on the microphone, doing what they know how to do best. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have come to a segment in this program today where the MVPs, the most valuable players, those people who have called for this dream to come to reality today, the group of young Nigerians, men and women, drawn across the 36 states of Nigeria, including the Federal Capital Territory, who said, your Excellency, we have seen some qualities in you. We have seen the way you've been governing the good people of Kogi State. We have seen your level of youth inclusion as well as involvement of women in your government. We are begging you to come rescue Nigeria. Come put Nigerian women on the map. Come put youths on the map. Come and rescue the insecurity problem in Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call on the first group to come forward here today and give us the goodwill message, the Yahya Bello Network. And the convener of the network is Al-Hadi Abdul Ahmad. al Abdul Ahmad, please. Can we celebrate him? Can we celebrate this MVP? Thank you. Motoshi! Motoshi! I would like to seek permission to speak in our native language, Hausa. Mejigma! Bamna Motasa! Maswayim Motasa! Mejish Motasa! Mejkawina Motasa! Ich Excellency! Alaji, Yaya, Adoza Bello, Medjima Bate Majumbabana, Medjima SSG, Noko Yistex, Tambuana, Kumane Gidana, Chief of Staff, Nabamna Koji, Pamtanu Azuku, Mangama Yambaji, Shuagabanu Munyoi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Ya ulana te ta parin tiki. Ya ulana te ta matasa. Ya ulana te ta muka dada ya muke jira. Ya ulana te ta duwa na matashi da yake kasar nan. Ya yi parin tiki da shi saboda rana ce da muke kira ga matashi da ya fito takara kuma ya ansa kuma ya Declaration. One day, 
Chef Kadu, da is excellency. Yaya adoza bello. Yaya mukas dani. Yaya adoza bello. Chi ya pichan chanta. Nada. Yaya adoza bello. Chi ne guamunda. Kusan eighty percent insa mata sana ya kabinet insa. Chi ne guamunda. Kusan fifty percent insa mata ne atikim guamunda insa. Wana shiye sa muka gena de kisi mata sa muka dogo sha mata imanga muka che shiza muzaba shiza mi wana chaji ne agaremu mula kutamu wamu mata shi yai mana tagaran shuga banka sa 2023. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. We are going to continue. I like to call on Dr. Bello Runga to invite His Excellency. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we need to do this now. The hour has come to listen to that man. A man of hope, a ray of hope. When he speaks, it is hope. When he thinks, it is hope. He's an embodiment of Nigerian law. He's bridging the gap between the poor and the rich. He is a man that secures our security. He is the man that knows Nigerians. I would like us to welcome him and let them hear in Aso Villa. Let them hear that the man is here. Let them hear in Lagos that the man is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite His Excellency, the presidential aspirant, Hope 2023, the man of the moment, the man been waiting for the man Nigeria is waiting for his excellency Yaya yeah, Beno yeah, yeah, to speak. Let's give him a round of applause. Let's start clapping. Let's hear this man of the moment. He's the one this country has been waiting for. He's the one this country has been waiting for. He's the one women have been waiting for. He's the one men have been waiting for. He's the one
So, so how have people like you behind you. You get me. Thank you. Thank you. Please, the drummers can suspend their drumming and music. Your Excellency, Right Honorable Ahmed Idris Wasi, the Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives, and our guest of honor, Your Excellencies, the representatives of all the governors here present, my dear wives, Hajia Barista Amina Oiza Bello, Hajia Rashida Bello, and Hajia Hafizat Oiza Bello. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Kogi State, and my CME twin, Chief Edward David Onoja. All the distinguished senators and House of Representatives here present, ministers and members of the Federal Executive Council here present, and your representatives, the former minister of Aviation, Chief Femi Fani Kayode. Let me especially recognize the chairman of our campaign council and the national coordinator of Yahya Bello Presidential Campaign Organization, distinguished senator Jonathan Zwingina. Let me recognize the DG of our campaign, Mrs. Hafsat Abiola Castello, the daughter of our revered late leader, Chief Moshud Kashimau Olawale Abiola. All other campaign council members the Speaker, who gives the House of Assembly, and all the principal officers and members of Kogi State House of Assembly here present, all the chieftains, stalwarts from across the country of the All Progressives Congress, APC, the Secretary to the government of Kogi State, Dr. Mrs. Ayawade Folashade Arika, my chief of staff, pharmacist Mohammed Jamiu Azuku, all the honorable commissioners here present, all political and top government officials, all of our river traditional rulers from Kogi and all other states here present, members of the diplomatic corps, captains of industries, and leaders of the organized private sector, opinion molders and leaders of thoughts, representatives of non-governmental organizations and civil societies here present, all the support groups, loyalists from across the country here present, all the youth groups, women from across the country, my Lord, spiritual and temporal, other esteemed invited guests, members of the fourth estate of the realm, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I start with appreciation to God Almighty 
who has so far blessed me, blessed me. So much blessed me with life, health, good family, friends, and well wishes. But for God, I wouldn't have no story worth telling at all, and no platform from which to tell. But by His grace, I am what I am today. I am grateful for the opportunities to serve my country, which I have been given so far. In spite of the difficulties we face today, the privilege of being in Nigeria is one I cherish so dearly. Dear friends and fellow patriots, I wish to declare my intention to run for President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 2023 general elections. I will be doing so under the auspices of our great party, the All Progressives Congress, APC. I will be running on the broad political philosophy of progressive activism through social action and political reforms. We are so blessed as a nation, and yet it does not always seem so. I am running to restore hope by providing firm guarantees of security, unity, and progress to all Nigerians. Our focus will be proper management of our great diversities so that it can really be an advantage. We will foster more cooperation and integration among citizens and make sure that progress is made steadily across all sectors and indicators. Despite the dire challenges facing Nigeria today, no one can deny that President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, has given our country the greatest investments in public works, government housing, and social services since this fourth republic began. In addition, this administration has invested heavily in our national security. The war against insecurity may be taking longer than earlier expected, but President Buhari President Buhari has ensured that we have the combat resources to keep it in our foot hard until victory is achieved. It can also not be, de not, not be denied that under the APC government, Nigeria is pushing forward the most comprehensive proposals for restructuring since independence. The sum of government policies the Electoral Act and other statutes enacted and the ongoing amendment of our Constitution are fundamentally changing the way we do things. For instance, the average Nigerian governor has more powers today over matters of security, public transportation, taxation, fiscal federalism, mineral and agro resources, electricity, ATC, than at any other time in our history. These are the legacies of Mr. President. They will help the next president take longer. They will help the next president take longer and easier developmental strides. Why Nigeria much sure he is succeeded by one who is not. They will help the next president take longer and easier developmental strike, provided Nigerians make sure he is succeeded by one who is not out of, 
out to discredit or, or to consolidate, rather to consolidate. I have proven time and time again that I am the only one such successor in the A physics lineup for 2023. I am running for president because I see a bright light shining at the end of the tunnel for our nation. I am not one of those who only see doom and gloom. It is my intention to take custody of that light, to pierce the dark spot in our past and present. With it, to illuminate every gap in our nationhood and to fix them. I will ensure that this light is added over a new course to successors who will be the trust for the stewards that's our great future, which is central republic, which is several government by me, led by me, will be for our nation. I am not a known voted. I have been the governor of the district since January 27, 2016. I invite the leaders to assess my suitability for the president and the small part of my plan. Of course, when I mean my real small part, the verifiable, tangible baskets of works that we undertook and are undertaking to improve the lives and welfare of our people. I do not deny that false and evil reports against us have taken for you, have often been filled the press, but all of us know why. He who pays the piper dictates the tune, and those who control the media controls their narratives. It is well known that we offered powerful vested, we offended powerful vested interests on our way to power in Kogi State. Moreover, since we took office, we have committed the unpardonable political sin in Nigeria. That is, refusal to have godfathers and control with them. Their anger has borne furiously against us, and sadly, they have often misled the media about us. As a result, we have had to work extra hard to receive far sheer com comment, not to talk of accolades or credits for our many achievements. Before now, we have not cared much for bias reportage. Actually, we have gone ahead to record huge successes in spite of it. However, the 2023 presidential election is actually a battle for the survival of Nigeria. And I am passionate enough about my country to fight for the privilege of leading her. In this race, I am adamant that the truth and nothing but the truth shall count for any assessment of Yahya Bello as a man and as a governor and as a presidential aspirant. As part of our effort to set the record straight, we have developed an e-compendium, which is probably the first and the only one of its kind among Nigerian states. We have showcased what we have done in my new direction administration in Kogi State there. It is domicile at www.kogipedia.net and covers the period of 2016 till date. Kogipedia is a rich resource for research into the claim of performance which we shall make in the course of our presidential run. I have instituted a standing reward for anyone who can disprove any of the hundreds of projects we have done in Kogi State which I showcased in that particular website. More information about how we have led the confluence 
can also be found on our official Kogi State website, www.kogistate.gov.ng. In Kogipedia, you will see our strong efforts in education, health, infrastructure, and utility, job creation and youth empowerment, civil service and pension reforms, agriculture, security, human capital development, as well as our effort in cooperation and integration. Chimamanda Ediche warned the world about, in quote, the danger of a single story. She insisted, and I agree with her, that, and I quote, stories matter. Many stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign, but stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break, but stories can also repair, end of quote. To us, it is imperative that sincere Nigerians who truly love this nation are given every resource they need to make informed voting decisions ahead of 2023 general elections. The question of the next president of Nigeria is way too important to fall victim to lies like in the past presidential elections and the truth will start with a fair and accurate assessment of all aspirants or candidates. In Kukipedia, you will find us telling our own story. It is like, it is like to be an alternative narrative to what you have heard about us. But I assure you that it is the truth. Let me itemize the most important qualities which I consider imperative in our next commander in chief. I invite Nigerians to read all assurance of candidates by end. All assurance of candidates by them. If we want a country that will live up to our expectations from 2023. Youthfulness. Natural forces and physical energy cannot be abated if performance is to be elevated. I am 46 and a half years by the special grace of God. Of course, I will come 47 on 18th June this year. I am fit and I am physically and mentally fit. Courage. A clear capacity to be zealously affected in a good matter and to live with courage and foresight in the pursuit of the overall best interest of the people and the nation. The aftermath of the COVID pandemic has been dictated me enough for the time I stood alone and insisted and insisted that Nigeria deserves better. Of course, I give to this state a better treatment. Security. Proving ability to enforce security, unity, and peace in a large energy with difficult terrain. Citizens will be saved in their homes and assets. We must be able to safely go everywhere and wherever we want in this country. What God has helped us to do in Kogite, I am persuaded. By the special grace of God, we are going to, to beat the same thing if not more in Nigeria. <laughs> Diversity. Our next president must possess excellent record in successful managing diversity. We were able to take a polarized Sogi and put it into a society that is both diverse and inclusive today. We genuinely demonstrated that every we genuinely demonstrated that every tribe, religion, gender, age, class, and physical ability among us is unique and possesses intrinsic value. 
We distributed prayers and appointments here and made room at the table of government for everyone. Today we have a Kogize where the youth have predominantly won in office. The women have brought that five percent of the vacant actions to hold. People with special needs have adequate representation in government. Kogize is a microcosm of Nigeria and possesses the same diversity that over with money has caused us so much trouble in Nigeria. However, I mobilize my people and together we are working through our differences. Is it any wonder that the brutal personality cults, tribal clashes, former headers men of faith, and religious upheaval we inherited have seized? One of the most outstanding achievements as governor, and one of that I am very proud of indeed, is the dismantling of this age long time battle. Another is the elevation of inclusivity as a cardinal point in the compass of government. Increasingly, the measure of an individual amongst us is their humanity and their merit, that is, the sum of their own character and contribution, nothing else. I was personally surprised recently when I learned that we have achieved that 5% of the native adult children for women and that 54 Nigerians from every state and the FCC have been appointed in our government, ranging from cabinet seat to clerical and administrative positions. Moreover, I am gratified that this new program continues to add incredible value to this state. When we talk of inclusivity within the Nigerian context, our next leader must also recognize that it is not by fully functional without cooperation and integration. Nigeria must be able to live and contribute everywhere in this nation with the guarantee that they will not be called strangers. To achieve this, we must make sure that place of origin gives way for place of domicile. In the determination, in determining who is a son or daughter of the soil, our citizenship must no longer be diminished by indigenous. This is the next level in what it means to be in Nigeria, which I will actually champion as president. I promise that under the Hayabelo administration, Nigerians of every extraction will know that we know what it means to be free of the principle of exclusion that currently demean our very existence. All of us deserve to belong in one country without discrimination or marginalization and to receive our full and valuable parts in the national scheme of affairs. I am a leader, and as a person who overcome the minority syndrome, minority syndrome in God, with more difficulty to be where I am today, I want every Nigerian, especially the youth, to live in a country where no tribal religion or gender is ever considered a minority again, particularly by the things leaders do or fail to do in government. Just like I have done in Kogizhi, I will ensure that we apply a lot more empathy in how Nigerian society is run. Fears, equity and justice for on the guard government actions in the distribution of national resources and opportunities, including in the recruitment procedure of public entities, listening to all sides. As president, I will make sure that each and every Nigeria become mentally and physically empowered with an unshakable conviction and practical proof that they are not inferior to any other person for any reason. I believe that such conviction fully internalizes free people in their own minds and allow them to go to heights of achievement, frequencies, or impulses. 
Leadership can lead one into leadership can lead one into some lonely places where you may have to stand alone, where you may have to stand on your own against other people. I have had to do that plenty of times in the course of my journey as governor so far. For example, during the COVID pandemic, if there is nothing at stake as a leader, if there is nothing at stake, a leader can afford to reflect that. But once the people and the welfare are involved, one must only do what is right without caring for acclaim or accusation. Hopefully time will vindicate you. Even if it does not, you will get to have and keep a clear conscience because you do your best. In your Ayabelo administration, like his governorship, will be tough on crime. I believe that crime is crime, and all crimes are inexcusable. And I have demonstrated strongly, I have demonstrated strong capacity to neutralize crimes and criminalities in Kogi State. Most Nigerians probably do not know this, but we went from being the state where violent crimes are most endemic in 2015 to become one of the safest states in Nigeria from 2017 till date. Our crime rate has been one of the lowest in the country for years now. Terrorism, Kidnapping, banditry, and other violent crimes will not be tolerated when, by the special grace of God, I become the president and commander in chief. I will never, I will never tolerate non state actors who take up arms against the nation. Whatever their grievances might be, but I will be willing to listen to all sides and address all agitations here, especially those which are born out of the new imbalances in the treatment of citizens by the system. I will put up, I will put a stop to existential mistreatment of any people among us. Provided that agitators are not willing, or agitators are willing to give peace in chance, and threats of harm to the Nigerian nation and people are not brought to the table as level. The health or disease of our economy is crucial to the health of our country. According to a BBC report of February 13, 2012, over 100 million Nigerians live in extreme poverty during the PDB era. In 2018, with APC in the saddle, that figure, that figure has dropped to about 87 million, million people. Yes, Nigeria overtook India as the poverty capital of the world. Just this month, Nigeria, through the valiant effort of President Muhammad Buhari administration, relinquished the ignoble title back to India, having brought the number down to about 70 million. This means that, as of today, we have at least slightly above 70 million Nigerians living in extreme poverty which is defined as living on less than 855 naira per day. It is therefore clear that our path to national prosperity lies in pulling tens of millions of Nigerians out of poverty. We must make citizens our greatest resources for economic growth and wealth creation. The Buhari administration has a target of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty by year 2010. A Yahya Bello administration or Yahya Bello presidency will have an additional target of creating 
at least 20 million naira millionaires by the same year 2030, with the aim that each of them will employ or otherwise empower at least five other citizens. In this regard, we are going to learn a lot from the Southeast. We shall learn from our Igbo brothers. The apprenticeship model by which a boy from an indigent or affluent barber is taken, trained and turned into a multi-millionaire businessman in as little as 10 years is one we have to study or understudy and invest in. Harvard University already studied it and the Nigerian government was too no less. I have personally observed that this model worked on average 50% of the time, with at least five out of ten boys who apprentice with various evil friends of mine in the Union today in their own right. I also observe that it is not the line of business but the underlying principle and practice that works so well. This is because this amazing phenomenon is repeated sector after sector. Whether they deal in dental spare parts, electricals, pharmaceuticals, clothing, or even food stuff, ETC. This means it is a system that can be replicated we will explore this method as we move on. I have a vision of a Nigerian government and economy that is open, inclusive and honest. Leaders like me and governments such as mine have a duty to manage the economy so that it operates with the human face and transparent process. Kogise, under my leadership, has consistently led others in the World Bank's safe fiscal transparency, accountability, and sustainability at its sister's indices. It is a result I want to mainstream in the nation as a whole. This is why, as president, I will foster an economy in which every citizen can maximize their potential as wealth creators and change agents. We will work towards a democracy of the economy which plays equal access to the factor of productivity within the grasp of any citizen who is ready to work hard and to work smart in pursuit of their own dream. Being Nigeria's youngest governor comes with its own challenges particularly the burden of being constantly held up as a yesterday to measure the past and predict the future of youth participation in politics and governance. The expectations arise and come at plenty of rich level. But in the meantime, I am today to prove that leaders can be simultaneously useful and useful in high office. While my approach to resolving this conundrum may not be loud or popular, it has certainly proved effective. The Avalo presidency will pursue a clear defined strategy on broadening the footprint of new technology in our economy. We know how important this is to youth enterprise in today's law, in particular, we will set up a national blockchain task force to develop a trade-based policy for the nation in crypto. The metaverse, nets, and blockchain technology. This emergency can certainly not be ignored and or outside the ban or completely abroad. We must help our youth to keep pace with other generations across the world in a thoughtful manner. 
Dear friends, I am not ready for President apologetically, but on a solid record of verifiable achievements in my current assignment as Governor of Police State, I have proven antecedents in the vast area of Nigerian trade as Nigerian trade of so-called urgency, that is, security, unity, and progress. I will therefore say that I possess the academic qualification and have sworn experience to be the next Nigerian president on merits. The slogan of our campaign is vote, bridging the gap. All we want to do is to bring hope to our nation and people while bridging the gap in our body politics. This is only possible with the support of my party, the All Progressive Congress, and the Nigerian people. This is why MKO Abiola of blessed memory said, and I quote, People of Nigeria, our time is now. Who are the of power in the land? Enough of purpose in round four. Enough is enough. And of course, Nigeria, believe me when I say there is hope. Indeed, there is hope. My name is Yahya Bello. I am a Nigerian, and I hereby formally declare for President of the Federal Republic of Has been made by His Excellency Governor Yaya Bello for the state to fire for the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Congratulations and wishing you success, sir. Now inviting short courts, a booking for Christ, divers, and others to introduce the next act. All right, ladies and gentlemen, GYB to PYB. Ladies and gentlemen, we have lots of actors coming your way. God whom I serve, 
Blessed be his holy name forever. We give thanks to God for this day. We give thanks to God for his power, for his strength. We give thanks to God for our candidates and the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the governor of Kogi State, Governor Yaya Bello. We thank God, thanks to God for this day. And let me tell you this, that today you have a lion in government house in Kogi State. But from next year, you will have a lion at the Asso Rock Villa as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the person of President Yaya Bello. I can only thank each and every person for coming here today, for honoring us with this declaration. Each and every one of us is proud of our candidates. From here, we go to the field of battle for the presidential primaries, after which we have won, we will move to the field to win the presidency of this country. We are proud of our presidential candidate, we are proud of our governor, and we are proud of the next president of Nigeria. May God be with him, may God be with each and every one of you, may God be with our country, Nigeria. God bless you all, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Don't forget, we still have young Bolivia in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Young Bolivia will be coming up after. All right, may I now invite YBN ambassadors. Over to you, please. DJ, over to you. I don't want you leading the fast. Yeah. This has been the official declaration of the executive governor of Kogi State, Governor Yahya Belu, 
for the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, live at the Eagle Square here in Abuja. We need to thank you for joining us uh, in this live broadcast. I will now return you to our normal programming uh, in our studios in Lagos. Thank you for watching. The dance from the Edo City.